Welcome back to OSCON 2011. I'm Alex Howard from O'Reilly Media. Our next guest is, in fact, uh, Amir Michael, who does our hardware design at Facebook. We're going to talk a bit about the Open Compute Project. So thanks for joining me here. Hey, no problem. My pleasure. So uh, as people probably know, if they don't know, uh, you've open sourced your design for servers, right? Uh, what benefits have you received from uh, sharing that knowledge? So it's not quite open source. We share as much as we can about the hardware. Um, okay. Open source software means you can take this, the code and recreate exactly what it is it was intended to do. Hardware is a little bit more difficult to do that. Um, but we have a large team at Facebook who has been spending a lot of time rethinking hardware. All of our notes, all of our design guides, and all of that we basically shared with everyone else to use so that they can learn from it. Um, some of the benefits we've gotten are other companies who are now interested in deploying similar types of servers because they're designed for particular web scale type of application, they tend to be very efficient. Um, mm -hmm. And they're finding that our design uh, is more well suited than what the industry already has um, available today. Uh, and so they're learning from us, uh, which is good. Uh, we also are hoping to get more feedback on our particular designs from other people who might take them and tinker with them and find things that maybe we didn't do perfect the first time around. Um, we're definitely hoping to get feedback on, on what we did. Mm -hmm. yeah. Well, I mean, we're, we're at the uh, open source convention here. This community is uh, all about giving feedback. Um, what kinds of um, kind of return have you gotten in terms of co-creating this stuff? Mm -hmm. So there's definitely interest um, from companies uh, like Rackspace. Uh, a new company launched today called Nebula, who's also uh, considering using op our uh, open compute hardware as well. Uh, so we've had a number of discussions with engineers uh, on those teams, and we're already starting to look at next generation uh, type of hardware. Uh, and they're looking at our design specs and they're adding and uh, contributing new features back into that. Uh, we're still in the process of creating the infrastructure that will allow almost anyone to contribute back into that specification. Uh, but there are, are challenges with open sourcing hardware uh, it's, uh, that don't exist in the software model and we're working through those. Can you speak yeah. to what some of the specific challenges are? Yeah. Um, if you look specifically at, at a design cycle for a piece of code, right, you can have an idea write up some code, and the same day you can compile it and actually test it out. Mm -hmm. uh, on the hardware side, uh, it took us six months to get our first prototype of our servers. Uh, and then every new spin on that particular server took two to three months in between. So the design cycles are longer. They're more capital intensive as well, right? You have to ramp up um, a production line to manufacture a motherboard or a power supply, for that example. Mm -hmm. um, and those things take considerable amounts of money or investment. Uh, Facebook has been investing that money, but some of the challenges are how do we uh, allow people to do one-offs or branches of our hardware without having them to invest that type of capital into the process. Uh, one other challenge. The tools are another challenge. Um, a lot of the software or EDA tools, the design tools that we use to build uh, our circuits are pretty high-end. Uh, mm -hmm. They come from companies like Cadence, for example, mm -hmm. uh, and they do a good job but the average user in his garage probably doesn't have a Cadence license to be able to run those types of tools. Are there any open source tools that are available that might be able to function as replacements for them? Mm -hmm. I haven't really seen any yet, um, mm -hmm. but it could be one challenge for the, for the community to go and develop those types of tools. Um, but right now that is something that, that, uh, that uh, another challenge that we've identified in, in doing this type of a project in the open, traditional open source sense. Now, when uh, Facebook did this, you know, uh, this is a capital intensive choice, as you mm -hmm. say, to, to uh, mm -hmm. um, basically figure out how to optimize your hardware. Mm -hmm. um, how do you make the value proposition to people internally about sharing that investment with a broader community? Yeah, um, at Facebook, we're a social network, and we feel like that's really where our value is, um, providing a good social experience mm -hmm. uh, to people who use the site. The infrastructure that drives it, like uh, the physical infrastructure, like a lot of the software that we use um, in the past, has been open sourced, right? So all of, the, all of our uh, HP, or PHP, uh, MySQL, Memcache, big open source projects that we benefit from, that we have used to create our site. Uh, we didn't have the luxury of having an open source hardware project to rely on, too. So as a startup who was trying to uh, grow the business, uh, we uh, use traditional types of infrastructure. We hope that by open sourcing this, just like we were able to leverage software projects, other people can leverage our hardware project and build their business on top of it as well. It was a fairly simple argument to make. Um, 
traditionally a lot of this infrastructure was kept almost like a secret within the company mm -hmm. and maybe uh, a few years ago that would have made sense but our value doesn't really come from our hardware infrastructure it comes from the site itself and so we can share the hardware infrastructure and so uh, last question here sure. um, you mentioned uh, one area where you have an expensive component that you had you know don't see a way to replace it right away what other areas uh, do you see the community being able to pitch in and, and what are the next steps to optimize further yeah um, definitely, as we publish our design specifications, a lot of uh, one way they can pitch in is immediately taking a look at those specs, helping us edit them, helping us make them even better. Um, we need to identify a lot of uh, technologies or clever ways of doing things a little bit differently, like we did on the first generation of the server. Um, and so that type of feedback is going to be valuable. Um, Another way uh, or another direction we're looking at for the project going forward is storage. Right now, all of our compute and memory intensive applications are run on open compute servers. Mm. We are looking at doing uh, a project where we take a lot of the same design principles that we had in the first generation of open compute and building a storage box out of that as well. That will definitely be an opportunity for people to con contribute uh, to as well. Uh, and hopefully we'll have a successful launch of a storage box that the community can benefit from as well. Great. Well, yeah. thanks again for your time. My pleasure. All right. So uh, that was Amir Michael uh, from the Open Compute Project at Facebook. You can find him at facebook.com slash Amir. Uh, one of the wonderful benefits. You have a short URL there. And we'll be coming back shortly with Joseph Smarr from Google to talk about Google+.